What is poppin' yo, welcome back to another YouTube video, and today we are taking a look at another anime movie, because you know I love my anime movies, I've been on a absolute binge of anime movies, and today we're taking a look at a new anime movie by MAPPA, the same people that do create Jujutsu Kaisen, so you know the animation is gonna be good, you know that this anime is gonna be great because of who is making it, and because of that, let's... Let's just dive into it. This movie is on Netflix, and it is roughly an hour and 54 minutes, so you can easily watch it, like, you know, whenever you want. It's like, it's it's an easy watch. It's on the shorter side of the movie spectrum, like, for, for nowadays, anyway. Like, it's not like a three-hour-long movie. It's not, like, a, a massive commitment. It's, it's a very easy watch, and... I very much enjoyed this movie, but without any further delay, let's get into what Google has to say about this new anime movie that has recently come out on Netflix. So, Alice to There's No... I'm not even going to attempt that. It came out in 2023. It's a romance drama, which is an hour and 51 minutes, has a 7.2 out of 10 on my anime list, and has a 6.3 out of 10 IMDb, and a 71% on my on anime list. Or oh, IRL list. Any list. You can watch it on Netflix, and a factory explosion plunges a small town into a time timeless freeze, leaving 14-year-old Mazumi and his pals to grapple with a quickly collapsing reality. So, how the story actually goes is these four kids are at school, they're having a good old time, they're, they're just fucking about, and in the distance they see a giant factory explode. So they go over to check it out, and then giant, like, smoke wolves, smoke dragons, wyverns, creatures, come out of the factory and start flying around, and the sky cracks with this, like, big blue, like, shining light, and these dragons start fixing it and healing it, which is pretty interesting and pretty cool, to be fair. And then, that's it. It's all fixed. However, time starts to repeat itself and starts to loop. So it's just every day, over and over again. It is a snow day, every day, over and over and over again. And there is this girl which is found in the factory. And obviously the town's crazy person, he's the one who's like, Hey, hey, look at this. Hey, it's like divine judgment. Hey, hey, it's, um, hey, it, it, look, look at all this. It is... It's divine, God's judgment, it, it is the way of the world, and obviously our main character gets very invested with this girl, um, who's looking after the other girl in the factory, who the uh, god guy brought to um, see, and then the kids start, like, fucking about with it, and start, like, messing with, like, the fabric of reality, and like, hey, let's just go to the tunnel, see what everyone is see what the fuss is, see what's happening. So they go to the tunnel, and one of them ends up getting eaten, which then leads to loads of other people getting eaten by these smoke people, because they lose their heart. They feel an emotion which is like despair. So it's like, you know what? Let's kill them. And the the wolf creatures, the, the wolf gods, the wolf spirits, the giant smoke creatures just end up wiping them out. They're gone. And just leave everyone else there. And... It, it causes a lot of trouble, I will admit, but then they work out that the cracks are caused by emotion, and the emotion specifically of this one girl who came from the outside world. And when you get glimpses of the outside world through these cracks, it shows you what time would be like if it kept moving. So this guy, a main guy, and his sort of love interest get together in the future, and they have a kid, and their kid ends up coming to their place through the train. So they try and send her back whilst being, you know, while people try and stop them, and they're successful. They send her back, and she's very upset by it. She doesn't really want to go back because she's made friends here and she wants to stay here, but they end up sending her back anyway, and they then live happily ever after, staying 14 forever, and realizing they have more freedom than the people on the outside, and that's where the movie ends, really. So it is another one of those, like, supernatural sort of anime movies where it's like there is two different time periods, two different time zones, and they are linked in some way, and one can influence the other. And obviously, with our main guy wanting to help the outside world and future him, which he will never get to experience... He, he does it, and he does it very well. Like, this entire fucking thing is led by, like, the children wanting to help the outside world, whereas the adults just want to protect themselves and, like, protect what's, um, in this 
bubble, this sort of time freeze. Which, you know what, I can kind of understand. The adults can see this future through the glass and see that they're not there. So they know if this glass sort of bubble falls, if they, like, you know, if it all comes crashing down, they know they have no place. They know they're going to die. And they're probably scared by that. They're probably fucking terrified. But the kids are like, oh, we can see ourselves. We want ourselves to have a good future. Look at how miserable we look. We need to fix this. So they're trying their absolute hardest to save the, their futures from their parents who are, like, trying to fuck with it a little bit just to keep themselves alive and happy, which is a little bit strange. But again, this movie is really beautifully animated with... Um, Obviously, it's MAPPA, and we know MAPPA has some very high-quality animating levels. But they don't treat their work as very nice. So, obviously, I'm marking a few points down for that. It's not the anime's fault. It's obviously the studio's fault for not treating their animators right. And that's something that we need to fix. And that's something that they have to fix and they have to work on. Because the conditions that they're working is absolutely awful. So, just spreading awareness of that and how shit Mappa treats their animators and how awful it is for them to have to work. And it's like they have to work like eight hour, like eight day weeks and they don't get breaks. They don't get to go see their families. They are like forced to stay and animate this to like the highest quality they can. And I feel like, you know, we can get better animated. We can get better animes and better animation if we let them have rest, have breaks. Because then it it gives them like the refuel, the re-energize to come back and work harder and absolutely smash it out the park. So this anime has a really good art style, has really good animation, but I can't help but think it could be better if the animators were treated better. Voice acting here, again, I watch it in dub, so do keep that in mind when um, listening to me yap about this movie for the next, like, five minutes. It's great. The voice acting is really good. There isn't any awkward pauses due to, like, the lip syncing. It it's all flows really nicely, and it just gives a good, coherent story. And I absolutely adore, like, some of these voice actors. They are very, like, popular, very familiar, and they're in a load of other animes. The main character isn't that standout-ish. He doesn't have, like, bright blue hair. He just has some generic hair, and sometimes that in anime is all you need. Just some generic characters. You don't need to make them stand out, especially when you have such a small cast of characters like this. They don't need to stand out. Like, you can make them all have the same colored hair and just give them different hairstyles, but obviously be realistic with it, and they are. And their ha hairstyles and their character designs are really solid. They're some of the best character designs that I've seen in anime recently just because they look normal and, you know, they look generic and that's good. It, 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 it's a refreshing taste in your mouth to see some generic anime characters after watching like My Hero or Undead Unluck or Jujutsu Kaisen where they all have the crazy haircuts, the crazy styles and it, it's just a breath of fresh air is all I'm saying. The story is also really good. And it is absolutely insane just, like, how these kids manage to pull off their plan. It is really good, and it's very... It, it's, it's a lot of work for them. It's very bold of them to, like, you know, actually go through with this plan and rebel against the adults. But it's absolutely insane. They pull it off so flawlessly. And seeing them drive is insane as well. Because you forget, like, because they're stuck reliving the same day over and over again, but everyone remembers it, they're all, like, learning and they're all still evolving. Like, the main character's getting better at drawing. They're all learning how to drive. They're all learning new things and new skills. Even if the parents are like, hey, we don't want to fuck with this dome. No one's allowed to change. No one's allowed to do anything too drastic because obviously when this dome comes down we obviously don't want you to be propelled so far forward into like studies and stuff you know you got to stay at this level so then when it does come down you're just continuing from where you left off and i feel like that's really shitty because it's going to get very boring and very repetitive very quickly if you're just doing the same shit every day so after a while they do start to branch out and it does get really interesting and a little bit more uh, creative with all the stuff that they can learn and that they do and it also has a really strange love i don't know what shape it would be to be fair but obviously all these sort of like, the main group of kids all have, like, this weird love connection with, like, 
each one loving someone else and then them not reciprocating it and it gets messy i struggle to follow it i'm gonna be honest like everyone loves someone is all i fucking know and some of them get with who they want some of them don't and some of them die because of that which again is a, is a really sad way to go like with a broken heart getting absolutely wiped out by one of those smoke things but i want to know if it hurts because they crack they get the same crack in, that they do in the sky and it doesn't look like they're too phased by it and then when the big wolf comes and hits them they're not too fussed either they just kind of accept it so and you also don't hear any like painful screams it's just woof and they're gone so it's like they've been erased and they call themselves phantoms which is badass as fuck calling yourself a phantom and having the ability to sort of be a ghost in the real realm when these cracks do appear is fucking sick like i quite like that because you can influence the future a little bit but you have to make it back into the crack before it closes and gets sealed. Otherwise, you'll fade away and die. So there is a risk to it, but it also seems very fun. And after a while, you will start to learn the pattern. You will start to get used to it. And it will just be like a little activity that you can do. Just scare the shit out of your future self. I think it'd be really cool. Really funny. Really entertaining. And um, would definitely be what I do in this situation. If... You know, you know, if I if I was in it for a long enough time, I wouldn't do it like first year. I would may, maybe second year when it was a little bit more adventurous. But other than that, I hope you all enjoyed this YouTube video. I hope you all have an excellent day. This movie is a solid eight out of ten, so I do recommend you go watch it for yourself. Go make your own opinions on it and comment down below what you guys do think. Like, come back to this video once you've watched it. Let me know what you think. Am I correct? Do you agree with me, or do you think I'm stupid that I have absolutely trash opinions and trash taste? But other than that, bye-bye.